please explain to us what FTX was, what Alameda was, yeah. and Sam Bankman Freed, what he did with these companies. So we're still learning everything, right? Okay. So everything is based on what we know right now. But basically, uh, Sam used to work at Jane Street, uh, which is a trading firm in Wall Street. Uh, he was like, yo, I can make money in crypto. He subscribes to this idea of effective altruism, and basically like, make as much money as you can to do as much good in the world as you can. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, hey, yeah. hey. <laughs> Everyone's a liar. <laughs> Everyone's a liar. <laughs> hey, I want to make ten billion dollars to help people. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a fucking load of shit. <laughs> All right, so that's what he said. Yeah, and so he we starts bought out into that. Unbelievable, <laughs> Larry David, you fucking goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking so idiot. he starts out. And he's basically trading back and forth. You could buy Bitcoin on one exchange in America. You could go sell it in another country for a different price. He would just profit. The so he found some arbitrage there. Arbitrage. I think it was in Japan. Like Japan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's just doing it over and over and over again. That was the beginning of Alameda Research. Just think of it as a trading firm, right? A hedge fund for Hedge crypto? fund, trading firm, whatever you want. Okay. And at some point, uh, they were like, hey, this is a good game, but like the exchanges, that's an even better game. And for people who don't know anything about these exchanges, one of the key pieces is you have to have liquidity. So if you start an exchange, you need people to trade there, right? Because if people show up and they want to trade, they're like, hey, I'll sell Bitcoin, but no one wants to buy it, then you're screwed. Because you have to hold the Bitcoin until someone else buys it. You just need exchange. buyers and sellers to meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you could do that a lot of different ways. You could be really good at marketing and getting people there. You could have some sort of uh, better economics for people, like an incentive or whatever. They had an ex uh, exchange and then they had the hedge funds. So they could provide liquidity. So it was a very liquid market early on. So a lot of people would show up. It also didn't hurt that a lot of people supposedly when they were showing up were making a lot of money. So if you're a trader and you're like, hey, I can go trade in all these different exchanges, but I always make money on this one. Well, this one sounds like a good one. It's kind of like a sports book, right? If you're gambling all the time and you're like, oh, but I always win at this sports book, We're going back. they get all your business, right? Yeah. So that started to happen. Uh, and and then, real quick, an exchange is a place where people can buy crypto, sell crypto, and also store crypto, right? You're not supposed to leave it there, but yes, people do leave it on the exchanges. Uh, because think about it, if you're trading, especially yeah. the traders, right? If you're trading, you don't know if a couple hours from now you're gonna wanna buy, sell, do nothing, whatever. So you but leave you know, it. You can take it all the way off, put it back up, so you leave it up there. Yeah. So a lot of people leave it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so as this was building up, he built it into you know $32 billion company, FTX, uh, raised a bunch of money, had not really that many employees, a couple hundred employees, but for a $32 billion company, not that many. Uh, and then it like all fell apart over the last two weeks. And now people are, are waking up and they're like, oh shit, like they took away the alcohol. No one's drunk anymore on all the profits. Like what the hell happened? And that's where we are now. Okay, so what did happen? How did they go from $32 billion <laughs> to absolutely nothing? Yeah, that's pretty tough to do. Yeah. That, I feel like. So remember, $32 billion is basically like a fake number, right? It's kind of like uh, if we all start a company together and uh, we come to you and we're like, uh, our company's worth $100 million, And you give us a dollar and you say, yes, it's worth $100 million. Like now we're all like, oh, we have a $100 million company. But like, mm -hmm. that's just because we convinced you that it was worth $100 million, right? Got you. So it's the evaluation. So if it's worth $100 million and I give you a million dollars, I own 1% of that company. Co correct. At that evaluation. But like, at that some, valuation. Yeah, yeah, somebody else may be like, it's not worth $100 million, it's worth $50 million, right? Somebody else may be like, you guys are all morons, that's a worthless company. This always happens on Shark Tank. Correct. The guys come in and they they say you get 10% for a million dollars and they're like, you're, you're giving yourself a $10 million valuation? I don't agree. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So, 32 billion was the valuation of the company itself, which people were giving real money. They, they invested billions of dollars, but the 32 number was just the valuation of the company. Uh, and so what basically occurred was uh, people were giving them money on the exchange to buy and sell uh, crypto. And in their terms of service, it said, we don't touch the coins that you give us. So if you have Bitcoin on our exchange, we leave it there. If you have Ethereum, we leave it there. If you have stable coins, we leave it there. We don't touch it. And so one of the things that uh, does go on in crypto, it also goes on in traditional finance. Uh, and we've talked about on past episodes, like if you put your dollars in the bank, what do they do? They, they lend it out the back, up, right? There are crypto companies that do the same thing, but FTX said, we don't do that. And so people believe them. Hmm. And so then How it came out- making money? How are they making money? They take a spread. So like, uh, I wanna uh, sell Bitcoin, you wanna buy the Bitcoin? They take like a fee or a spread, yeah. okay. sometimes both. And so uh, it came out that at some point over the last couple of years, uh, Sam, the FTX team, whoever, allegedly was like, oh, why don't we take the user funds and like bring it over here to the hedge fund? Which is Alameda. Correct. And so it's unclear, like, were the, was there legal documentation that it was a loan? Did they just, like, move it? 
the degree of uh, uh, intentionality versus they would describe it as a mistake, like you can imagine there's a big bankruptcy filing, so like now lawyers are involved, like yeah. it's all gonna come out. So do, yeah. we, do we know if they moved the funds or if they took a loan on the, on the creator funds? What I think is clear is that like $8 billion, like wasn't where it was supposed to be. I think it's maybe the best way to say it. Right. And how it got to the, the wrong place, I think there's uh, uh, s- some uh, debating going on right now. Now, is is it, I read something about them backing that, let's call it a loan or whatever it is, with their own token. Yeah, is so, that true? Because so, they had a token, right? FTT is. This is where it gets kind of crazy. So like, imagine, again, go back to that example. We have a $100 million company that we all created. We got an investor to invest at that valuation. And then he was like, all right, cool. Like, what are the assets of the business? And we're like, well, we have uh, some computers, we have some desks, and then like, we literally just have a stack of papers that we just like ripped out of a notebook, and they're just sitting here, and like, that's an asset. And they're like, well, what's it worth? Be like, well, we sold some of those pieces of paper to somebody else for a hundred dollars a piece of paper. Be like, okay, like, why do they think it's worth a hundred? Well, that's what the market says it's worth. It's not paper, they just created coins. Like they literally just like got coins that they created, FTT. Now, there was uh, an advantage if you held it. So some of these exchanges do have coins and what they'll say is things like, uh, if you have our coin, uh, you may get lower fees on the exchange. And they try to create like value. So you trade in your Bitcoin for FTTs and then they pay you to hold the FTTs. Like a casino kind of thing. Like A few different exchanges did this. I think uh, <clears throat> Block5 might be one of them. Yeah, so BlockFi. Pompito! <laughs> you want to air, you want to air out your problems? <laughs> no, I'm just saying you got me into crypto, so I have some idea of what you're saying, yeah. which is rare, and I know different ways in which you fucked me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I still believe long term, but you you know you fucked me gently. But BlockFi doesn't have BlockFi doesn't have a token, but there are other ex- actual exchanges. So Binance has a token, FTX had a token, etc. And uh, what became kind of weird is like if you control the money supply essentially of FTT and you give it to someone and you say, hey, uh, I'll give you five hundred million dollars of this token, give me a loan or give me some value. Uh, I invest the token now. I own equity in your business. Like all these different things. It's pretty brilliant, actually. If the token is worth what you say it's worth. Okay, it's crazy, but like, okay. The problem, what eventually happened is CZ, the CEO of Binance, was just like, I don't think that I'm gonna hold this anymore. And he tweeted it, which like- So Binance is another- Exchange. Exchange. Yeah. The biggest competitor of FTX. Correct. And it looks like he intentionally tried to affect FTX's bottom line or business or tank the whole company. It appears that way. CZ doesn't seem to be a stupid guy, yeah. and uh, uh, he basically had a kill shot, and I think he took it. And right? why it's, did it's he have a kill like. shot? Like, they helped seed FTX year, years ago, mm-hmm. so he was an investor, and so he got bought out of his position, and he publicly said that they got paid uh, in, in stable coins and some of these other tokens, these FTT tokens. So he was sitting on like five hundred million dollars worth of the token, and he realized. And what he tweeted was just like. Uh, Due to recent uh, information, because there's an article that CoinDesk uh, published, he goes, uh, we're gonna be selling our position. But if you've got $500 million. That's a big you, position. You tell people you're gonna sell it, yeah. well, everyone else goes, maybe I'll sell before he sells. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard uh, SBF, Sam Bankman-Fried, uh, try to buy the position at like $22 a coin from, what's his name, is CZ? CZ. From CZ, and then CZ said no because he didn't want it to get purchased. He wanted to flood the market. There was a public tweet from the CEO of the hedge fund, uh, which again, this is where you start getting into a little bit of conspiracy land. Like, yeah. uh, why did she tweet $22 was the price of the token at the time? Yeah. Like, was that an important number? And so did they kind of reveal or tip their hand? And, and so like the one thing in crypto is like, there are millions and millions and millions of people around the world that are playing this game slash in this industry, trading, whatever. These people are not dumb. Yeah. And so if they think that there's an opportunity to make money by uh, arbitraging something or by like yeah. basically screwing somebody yeah. in terms of like the market, like they're gonna at least try. Yeah. And so that's ultimately what happened. It unraveled the whole thing. Uh, and pretty much within like a week, they filed for bankruptcy. Mm. And wasn't there a leak 
that came through CoinDesk that basically kind of blew all of it up before the tweet? And how did that leak come out? I don't know who leaked it. Um, what was the leak? It was the balance sheet of the hedge fund. Ooh. So like basically saying like- The hedge fund is Alameda. Alameda, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, they have all these assets, but a lot of them are in this token that is their token. Like kind of like revealed more information. Uh, there's a guy, Ian Allison at Coindesk, who in my opinion, like this is the story of for sure the year, if not probably the <clears throat> decade, uh, when it comes to kind of this new like digital world. And uh, he's not gonna get as much credit as he should, but uh, it wasn't like the mainstream media, it wasn't uh, a regulator, it wasn't like somebody supposedly from the industry leaked the balance sheet to a reporter in the industry, he published it, and then like the free market took over. Interesting. Right? And then you have CZ, he's got well, the CZ coins. CZ kind of swayed it a little. Like, he kind of started that run. That's the mar he's a market participant, right? Yeah, it's right. it's kind of like free market uh, dynamics uh, play. Now, the sad part, and I think we should call it, is like, a lot of people got hurt in this, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's a lot of people who lost money. There's yep. a lot of people who got duped. There's a lot of people who thought this was one thing. It turns out it's not. So, like, free market is, like, this interesting dynamic. Because, mm -hmm. like, technically, I've said that, like, the free market's the judge, jury, and executioner. But like there's collateral damage as well. Huge, and huge. so this happens in finance to a degree. But if in finance, let's say a stock goes down too fast. Like remember during COVID, like the stocks, <laughs> they'd be falling. Like they look like shit coins, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they have something called um, a circuit breaker where if the stock falls, I think it's like 8%, uh, they basically just say time out. And the trading. stock stops trading for 15 minutes. Like everyone catch your breath. And then if it falls again, they, they stop it. And then if I think it's like 20%, they shut off the trading of that for the day. So it's not just this one day race to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So like very rarely will you see it. Now now in aftermarket trading, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that can happen. But like there's controls around the trading of the uh, assets because they've seen this stuff happen in the past yeah. where things can go from worth a lot to basically nothing in second. Now, isn't that an argument for regulation? I know one of the beautiful things about crypto, one of the things that was so exciting about it was that it was not regulated it was not it didn't have like that central bank system that we have here and that freedom that people talk about i'm sure you spoke about many yeah. times but i feel like this experience right here is a perfect example of where regulation could have helped yeah there, there, well there's two things so first you can't confuse bitcoin with like all this other stuff right so right. bitcoin is a decentralized kind of electronic peer-to-peer -peer all this other currency. stuff is it's fiat. finance. Yeah, it's finance. No, no, but but it's like some more similar to the dollar. It's like the dollar. hundred percent. Like what you were describing with FTT, I was thinking, yeah. how is that not fiat? Yeah, it, it basically these people have become central banks. And and the the thing about that is like if you are a central bank, you're gonna need regulation in place. So yes. they were central banks without regulation. And what would somebody do if they just had a printing press for money? Well, it's, e it's even, I think, worse than that. So like Bitcoin is kind of in a league of its own. It is this decentralized thing. It an asset isn't regulated, right? Like the dollar doesn't get put in jail. The dollar isn't fined. It's the companies and the organizations uh, and, the, and the people who deal with dollars, they're regulated in the traditional financial world. So the asset's just an inanimate object. Same with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's just a system. You can't regulate it. There's nobody to put in well, jail. Well, there is a regulation, right? There's an amount. That, I would call that a regulation. Oh, the code, yeah. The, the code basically says it'd be 21 million Bitcoin. Yeah. And, and maybe right. that's all you need to create the value. So it, It's like a self-regulated. The reason why it's the most valuable is because it has a regulator on it. Yeah, it's decentralized, it's the most secure. And also I think that there's like the, the least amount of fuckery, which I think is a really key piece to this because what we'll see on, on this other stuff is like they just recreated finance. And yeah. I don't go as far as maybe some of the, the hardcore Bitcoin like maximalist people will go. They'll be like, it's all worthless, it's all stupid, it's all the stuff. I just look at it as like people are going to create these financial systems whether we like it or yeah. not, right? Yeah. They're gonna do it. Yeah. But what the central bank idea of like just creating your own tokens to your point, like there's no disclosure rules at the same level that there is in the legacy financial system. But FTX was regulated. They had a regulated entity in the United States. They had a regulated entity in the Bahamas. Now you could argue how good were the regulations in either place, should they have been better, whatever. But there's details coming out now that like the auditors didn't know this was happening. So you kind of have to ask yourself like if, you go to a company, you say, send me your audited financials, and they send them to you. Like, what else do you want? This is like if you're an do. athlete and you could beat USADA. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, every, every year they find a way to get the roids in the system without being detected. And they're like, here, I passed my drug test. You passed? Mm. So they were passing the drug test even though they were on the roids. 
they don't like right before you run the 100 meter dash at the Olympics, they're not like, take yo, take the, take the yeah, blood yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. right? So like there, there's a little bit of that going on, which again, more details will come out and I think it's important uh, that we find that out over time. But also like the regulations don't always stop bad people. Like if you remember, Bernie Madoff was regulated, mm. right? Mm. So part of regulation, which is, which is interesting is like, if people are just flat out lying, usually almost 100% of the time they get caught. But what we find out is like, they're able to trick the rules or the regulators for some period of time. And so you can't just say, oh, if it's regulated, it's 100% all good. And what I think in this situation is that like, this grew so fast. There were so many different types of organizations involved from investors to the people they did commercials with, like all this stuff. People just were like, no one even asked the question of like, could the audited financials be wrong? Could this information be wrong? Could they just be potentially misleading people? 